Hello, hello. Are we live? Yep, we're good to go. Welcome back to the advent of Sintran. Today is day nine. Uh, I never got part two figured out for day eight yesterday. I did fix all the memory leaks so it can run without using up all my RAM, but apparently it takes well over two billion steps. E either that or I still have some other bug. Uh, because my instruction index got over 2 billion, I guess, after running for like 10 hours. Uh, and then I can't index into the instructions. Uh, so I, got, it, I could fix that with a 64-bit integer, or you could just, you know, modulo your index when you get to the end of the cycle. But you still need to count how many steps you're doing, so you still need a 64-bit integer. Uh, but I don't know if that's right or not, and I'm ready to get into day 9. So let's do that. is day nine, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Let's get the test input. I actually watched another streamer last night, so I saw part one of day nine, but I haven't seen part two yet. So this is the test input. And let's get the real input, too. <clears throat> okay, those are some numbers. So... be able to echo the input and there's the test input all right let's work on parsing this this is not hard to parse it's all numbers delimited by spaces uh, there are negative numbers in the real input but not the test input so you have to be able to parse those let's get out of day eight i did not want to close that window entirely Okay, so we read a line of text. I think we only have to deal with one line at a time, so there's no point counting the lines of the file beforehand. So we read a line of text, and then we're going to split it by spaces as the delimiter. Uh, but I have a function which will split it and then parse integers out of the substrings. So uh, let v, my vector is going to be v, equals I think it's called parse <clears throat> parse i32 delim so it's going to parse the string and the delimiter is just a space there are no other delimiters okay so there are the inputs parsed as vectors so uh, what we have to do is differentiate these. We're going to differentiate them down, and then we're going to extrapolate back up to figure out what kind of sequence this is, whether it's constant, or whether it's increasing linearly, or I think this one is increasing quadratically, and then I guess this one might be cubic or something. And you can find that out by taking derivatives until you get a constant. Uh, but not like real calculus derivatives. We're doing finite difference versions of derivatives so the puzzle prompt which i've already seen somebody else stream explains all of that so the difference between these numbers is three so from zero to three is three from three to six is three this is like sort of an upside down pascal's triangle or something so you get this number by taking the difference of the two numbers above and then you repeat that again on this sequence and they're all threes so you get all zeros uh, that's the first row of numbers. And then the second row of numbers is a little bit different. So you take the 
derivative of this and you get two, three, four, five, six. So this is not a constant like it was for the first row. You do that again, you get all ones. And then one more time you get zeros because this one is increasing quadratically, not linearly. <clears throat> and then, yes, so this one is cubic because there's yet another row. And then after you take those derivatives to get a row of zeros, they want you to integrate back up and predict the next number in the sequence to like extrapolate the linear curve or the quadratic curve or whatever kind of curve it is. Uh, so for this example, you add this back. Remember when we took the derivatives, we only had three zeros in the bottom row. So to extrapolate back up, we add one more zero and then we add that to the last number from the row above. So we extrapolate a one, then we extrapolate a seven and then we extrapolate a 28. So basically 28 is, I don't want to say the answer, it's, it's the extrapolated value for this row. And then what's the final thing? They just want us to add all of them together. So I'm going to want a derivative function and I'm going to want an integration function or an integral function. Derivative is easy. You just take the inputs and there's one less of them than there are in the row above. So we, we get a shorter vector out of that when we do the finite difference derivative. <clears throat> so derivatives are easy. Uh, integrals are a little bit tricky because it depends what the initial value is. So when we integrate, we also want to know what the initial value of the last sequence was. And then we can do like a cumulative sum to get everything in the sequence, as long as we just know the one initial value. Uh, so I think I don't want to make my derivatives shorter. I want to pack in the derivative plus the initial value of the last sequence. And that way when I'm integrating, I already have the initial value packed into the same array. So I want a differentiation function or a derivative function. I'm going to call that diff. I'm going to take a vector of integers. And I think it's going to take the level of the derivative, because that's going to be, depend on where we start packing in the answer to the result array. And this will return another integer vector. Is this just, do I have Scilab open? I don't really want to spend time opening Scilab. Because uh, I, I think this thing is just built into MATLAB. <clears throat> Differences and approximate derivatives. Yeah. Yeah, so MATLAB has this function built in. You have a vector of numbers, you take the diff of that, it just subtracts every one from the next one, and it has one fewer element. Uh, so this is why I'm na naming my function diff, because in MATLAB they call it diff. <clears throat> and, and I want to put like a descriptive comment in here. So differences. 
an, an approximate derivative. It's not really a derivative because when you talk about a derivative in calculus, you're saying like differentiate y with respect to x, and this isn't really with respect to anything. Maybe it's just with respect to the indexing of the vector, but there's no other independent variable. So it's arguably not really a derivative. Take the nth level, because when we call this once, we'll get the first derivative. When we call this again, we're going to get the second derivative, and we're going to keep taking derivatives until we get all zeros. I'm just going to initialize it to v. I think, because then I have the initial values packed in automatically. And then if we're taking the first derivative, n will be 1, so we're going to start iterating from 1. <clears throat> dvi equals vi minus vi minus 1. And I think that's it. And then we just return the answer. So can we do this once? I, I think I don't want to have a separate v, I just want to reuse my v. Uh, <clears throat> it's not really for efficiency, because I think Cintran is just going to waste a bunch of memory with memory leaks anyway. But I, there's no point having a different variable for the derivative. So can we take the first derivative? Okay, so that's basically it. This is the derivative, and then this is the initial value of this sequence. So they're both packed into the same vector. So here it should be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Just want to get the first one, and, and then we'll do this iteratively until we get all zeros. And then this one is 3, 3, 5, 9, 15. 3, 3, 5, 9, 15. That's right. Uh, that they're also showing the extrapolation row here. So I, I don't have that yet. It's just the derivative. <clears throat> uh, and we're supposed to keep doing this until we get zeros, right? Hey, Connie, welcome back to the stream. So we're going to do, we're going to repeat the derivatives until the last value of v is 0. So while v size v minus 1, that this is the last value of v, does not equal 0, we're going to keep taking derivatives. Uh, so this will be the ith derivative. The first time through, we'll take the first derivative, then we take the second derivative. And that determines how many initial values get packed into the answer. <coughs> that didn't work. Right. Because this is not Fortran. Uh, yeah, this is Sintran. Uh, in, in Fortran, you use parentheses to subscript a vector. 
And that's really confusing because that's the same syntax for functions. So what does this error message say? Uh, it says undefined function. In Fortran, functions look like vectors, vector subscripts. Uh, and there's not really any way to just look at code and tell whether something is a function or a vector. Fortran, who hurt you? Uh, uh, that's that's a long, complicated question. I, I really like Fortran, though. Okay, so there it is for this one. We stop at that point. For this one, we have to go one more derivative, uh, and this one is yet another derivative. <coughs> <coughs> and then we also pack in the initial values from the array above. So for this one, we get three twos. Yeah, we have three twos. And then before those twos, we have the initial values from the previous derivatives. And that's going to help us when we iterate back up. What does Sintran be? Sintran is an array-oriented language. Well, it's not very good yet because I wrote it myself. Uh, if you go to my GitHub, should be able to find Sintran. And this is the interpreter for Sintran. It, it's an interpreted language. It's really not fast. I've got all kinds of memory leaks, which have been crashing my streams for the last three days of advent of code in a row. Uh, did I finish the font render? Yeah, uh, depending on what your definition of finish is, I, I got as far as I wanted to take it. So uh, I can like, I could make text. Uh, I, I never really got around to like full typesetting and like breaking things into lines, but I, I can typeset like one word and that's about as far as I want to go. Yeah, so this is Sintran. Uh, you can build it and play with it, but I don't recommend that you do that because it's full of bugs and it's going to be really impossible to use. Uh, but I'm seeing how far I can get in the advent of code with it. Finish, good enough to be satisfied. Yeah, I, I mean, it's a side project, so. I think it's done. <clears throat> okay, so we have the derivatives. Now we have to take the integrals and extrapolate back up. So uh, the integral is going to be like the cumulative sum. Uh, I don't know how to spell zeros. There's an extra E in zeros, right? So after we take the derivatives, we're going to integrate and extrapolate back up. <clears throat> so I think I want to keep track of N. Uh, <clears throat> can I do this? It seems it's accepted. Oh, it's either way. I did not know that. Maybe maybe one's American and one's British or something. <clears throat> can I do this for I in I? I don't know if I can do loops with negative steps. Uh, so this i, if this works, this might not work. This i is supposed to be a lo local loop iterator. It's only going to have its value inside here. This i comes from here. So this i is like shadowing this i. And I just want to see if this loop will work without making me use an extra variable. OK, US, UK. <coughs> Okay, so we took three derivatives and then we can do a loop up to three because the, the number of integration loops that we do depends on how many derivatives we had to take. So that works, this variable shadowing works. Uh,
but but I would prefer to loop in the other direction. The problem is I don't think this works. I don't think I can do negative steps in my for loop iterator. Yeah, yeah, that that doesn't work. That's a Sindran bug. This is why I don't recommend anybody use the language. Uh, so what I really want is... Okay, I, I, do, I do need another variable. <clears throat> so never mind about the shadowing. Uh, what I want is n minus i. Is the interpreter written in Fortran? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, is this off by one? Yeah, I, th I think this is off by one. Because we took three derivatives. Then how many initial values? How did I end up a fan of Fortran? Uh, it's, it's just what I use for work. I started about 10 years ago in grad school using Fortran. Uh, it, I'm a mechanical engineer, so I, I do like a lot of STEM, well, of course, all of us are doing STEM stuff, uh, but like, like I do a lot of engineering numerical stuff. Uh, before Fortran, I used MATLAB a lot, and Fortran and, and MATLAB are actually pretty similar to each other. So it's 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 really the indus industry standard for what I do. Maybe I do want this to be four, because we have two zeros. Yeah. We have two zeros here, and then we have four initial values. So I want to pass this into my integration function <clears throat> to basically say, treat these as initial values, and then treat these as the thing that you're integrating. And the integration function is going to be like a cumulative sum. Most of the time, old reliable tech is still the best. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I would agree with that. I, th I still think Fortran is pretty good. There are things about it that I don't like, but nothing is perfect. <laughs> now, when we integrate, we're not going to get a vector. Actually, yeah. Yeah, we are going to return a whole vector. That's why I'm never switching away from the abacus. I still have a slide rule. I, I don't have an abacus. But this used to belong to a distant cousin of mine. I have one of these bad boys. There, that's in the frame. Slide rule. Uh, it's, it's a little bit more high tech than an abacus, but it's not quite a calculator. Got to use that with your logbook. Well, the point of a slide rule is that you don't need the logbook. So, 
that the slide rule was the next step after the logbook. Uh, maybe I just want to reverse this notation. <clears throat> so diff takes v and gives you dv. Integrate will take v and then give you, or, or it will take dv and give you v. Science conference about AI and stuff. C and inline assembly, that's the way. So let's 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 start with this one. So we have all zeros. Uh, you lost your slide rule while moving. That's too bad. So we take two derivatives, we get a bunch of zeros. So now this value is two. So we're going to start differentiating here, but we're going to use this one as the initial value. So we're going to start with a three and then take the cumulative sum of everything after that. Uh, so let sum equals dv n minus 1. And then we're going to loop through the rest of the array. So for i in n through the size of dv, Yeah, here I need more than a one-liner. Uh, so where do we put this value? I think I have an off by one error in, in one of these lines, maybe both of these lines, but I think this is close. So that's the integration function, and now we have to call that. Uh, and, and we need one more value at the end, so I think the size of this array has to change. My abacus should still be somewhere at my mom's, though. Well, it's good that you didn't lose that, at least. Integrate n minus i. Maybe, let's, let's just see if we can do this without extrapolating the next value, because then we have to change the size of this array. All right, have fun. seem right. So we just got all zeros.
feel like we skipped a step. We should... We should have gotten all threes first. So this is the input to the first call to the integration function. We have a zero and a three, and that's okay. And then, oh, we're, we're overwriting this. And then, yeah, there's, there's an off by one error. I think I fixed that the wrong way. Yeah, so, so this has, we have to have an extra value here because otherwise this is going to overflow. And I, I don't have a clean way to initialize that. Like for, if, if it's the whole vector, I can initialize it like this and this will set every element of the vector. Uh, but if I want to change the size, I, I have to use a loop to copy each element. <clears throat> mm. So we're going to initialize it to zero, and then we're going to copy the first few elements. So the size is plus one compared to the input derivative. And then we're going to copy the first n values. Is that right? Uh, oh, this should be dv. That, that was another problem. Still don't think this is right. Almost. So I'm, I'm still off by one. So, so, so maybe, maybe this line was right and all I had to do was fix dv instead of v. Oh, we're so close. Uh, why does this skip the beginning? So when we integrate this,
So we really have four zeros, and then three is just an initial value. I think I just have to set the last thing, but I still have some kind of off by one error. I would really like to do this once and then not do the rest of the file yet. Uh... Okay, so this is only the first line and we, we can focus on the simplest case. Three, four, five. We got that correct. We integrated once correct, but then we just didn't extrapolate the next value. So we just have to, be, because we added this plus one, and now v I just have to do the math again. V size dv zero equals sum. We have an extra zero here, and that's not right. Yeah, yeah, we actually don't change the size because we already have the initial values packed in. Uh, we do have to change the size, but we have to change the size somewhere else. So inside this thing, which calls the derivatives and integrals, we have to append an extra value. And then integrate will not append anything inside. <clears throat> so actually, this was closer to correct. And then we're not going to do that. So I do need an extra variable, and then I'm going to have to copy this back and append something. See what that does. So we still have an extra zero there, and we don't really have the extra extrapolated value at the end. But for this step, we got it right.
So this thing is two. Zero, one, two. We should start summing at two. Yeah, where did this extra zero come from? Are these lines just in the wrong order? Yeah, I think that's it. Let's try the whole file. Okay, I think that's right now. I just have to add up the final values of everything. <clears throat> so we have a sum here initialized to zero, not to be confused with the sum inside the integral function. Uh, so this sum is zero, and then we're gonna add the last value of every extrapolation onto that. So sum plus equals v size v minus one. And that's supposed to be 114. So we got that right. Let's try that on the real input. This is getting close to the 32-bit limit. I don't know, let's, let's see if it's right. I, I might have an integer overflow problem. That's not right. Maybe this sum needs to be a 64-bit integer. Am I allowed to do this? First of all, I have to turn off some of this printing. What did I get before? What, what did I paste in here? That's uh, the same thing, isn't it? Okay. So it's not an overflow problem. I have some other bug. seem to be reading the negative numbers correctly. That's good. Why doesn't this work? That's the same number again. I really need to save that so that I know that's not the answer that I'm looking for.
Okay, so let's go back to the test input and look at this a little bit more closely. So we have 10, 13, 16, 21, 30, 45. Take the derivative of that. We have the initial value 10, and then the rest of the things are the derivatives. So 3, 3, 5, 9, 15. The next derivative is 0, 2, 4, 6. The next derivative is 2, 2, 2. And finally, 0, 0. And then the initial values, so we have 10, 3, 0, 2. We have 10, 3, 0, 2. Those are the initial values of every derivative. And then when we add that back up, we get a 2. We get an 8, we get a 23, and 68. 10, 13, 16, 21, 30, 45, 68. How can I get this right for the test input? And what is different about the real input that I'm not getting the right answer? Let's let's check. So, so this was like the most complicated line from the test input. Let's check the other one. So let's check this one. So that would be here. One, three, six, ten, fifteen, twenty one, two, three, four, five, six, all ones, and all zeros. And then when we integrate back up, we get zero. Well, we, we, I, I never really print the zero, but I print the one, seven, and twenty eight. And then that whole row is the same. 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, 28.
So the things that we add up <clears throat> are 18, 28, and 68. Is, is, I think that's all there is, 18, 28, and 68. That's all there is, 18, 28, and 68. Somehow it doesn't feel right that that's 114, but it is. Am I parsing the input correctly? I have to move the chat out of the way for a second. So this line ends with 401,000 and change. And then I get that vector. I want some more blank lines in here. Where are some negative numbers? Here's a negative number, we get the negative 9, negative 26, another negative 26. So I seem to be parsing negative numbers correctly. Okay, so if we differentiate this, do we have any anything that's like over 2 billion. So 0 through 9, and then 9, 10 times. No, we don't have any 10. Hold on. Do it like this. So the sum is a 10-digit number. But other than that, I don't have any 10-digit numbers. What's the biggest number we have? We, we have an eight digit number. <clears throat> and some of our incremental sums are eight digit numbers. How many lines of input are there? We have 200 lines of input. So, so we could potentially have an overflow, but I think I've already accounted for that. Abby, Abby de Bar Aria. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I cannot read that and I can't pronounce it. Adiba, Adibar Aria. There we go. I cannot read. From India. Welcome to the stream.
Okay, what is the sum? Do I ever get a negative number for the sum? No. Am I searching for negative numbers? Yeah, so I, I never get a negative number for the sum. My sum never overflows, apparently. So that should be safe. But I made it a 64-bit integer just in case. Nice pronunciation, huh? I'm, I'm surprised I was able to do that. It, it took me a few tries. Adi, okay, that's easier. I have this working for the test input, but my, my, my answer for the real input is not correct, apparently. And I'm trying to figure out why. So we differentiate this a bunch of times. And eventually, after like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven derivatives, we get all zeros at the end. And everything else in the array is initial values from the previous derivatives so that we can integrate back up. Bararia is the surname. Okay, yeah, I, was, I was having trouble parsing where the, the first name started and the last name began. So then when we integrate back up, do we at least get everything except the final value being the same? So this is the final integral with one extrapolated value. So from here to here should be the same as the input array or the input vector. So is that true? I, I think it looks correct. Yeah, every number has been, because we're not like, we're not just copying the first elements of the array, we're extrapolating it from the derivatives. So th there could have theoretically been a mistake in here. And then, is this Linux? Uh, kind of, I I'm running WSL, Windows subsystem for Linux, inside of Windows. So yeah, th this is Ubuntu, but it's running inside of Windows. Are all of these the same? Yeah, everything is the same. And then we have one extrapolated value. Is that correct for the next one? Uh, no, it's, it's not VMware. So I, I don't think I have VMware installed. Apparently I have VMware Workstation Player. I, I don't really know what that is. Yeah, I have this, I don't know what it is. I haven't used it recently, uh, but yeah, this is not VMware. This is WSL. So if you search, uh, my other monitor is the primary monitor. So Windows doesn't really want to search here. This is WSL, it's the Windows subsystem for Linux. And that includes Ubuntu. So that, that's how I'm running here. Is this next one correct? So let's, this, this is the string that we parse. This is that string parsed as integer, an integer vector or a vector of integers. And then we differentiate it a bunch of times and then we integrate the derivatives back up to extrapolate. So once again, this looks the same up to the final extrapolated value. Okay, now here's one with negative numbers. Maybe I have a mistake with negative numbers. Oh, oh, what the hell is that? This is negative 277. That's a problem. I'm doing BCA. Uh, what is BCA? Oh, wait, no. 
yeah, we, we have positive 227 here and then negative 227. They're, they're just not lined up because of the comma separators. Okay, Bachelor of Computer and Application. Cool. How many years have you been doing that? Am I parsing this correct? I just have to get these lined up. Hold on, I can probably do a fancy macro. Advance by a word, insert a space. Ah, no, now it puts a space. I have to find a space and replace it with two spaces. So find a space. Okay, so I'm parsing the string into integers correctly. I, I saw this 227 and I, or no, I saw this negative 227 and I saw a 227 and I thought like, oh no, I can't parse negative numbers. Uh, no, no I, th I think your, your English is good as far as I can tell. Hindi and English. So I think all of these numbers are the same. So I'm parsing the input correctly and I'm also parsing negative numbers correctly. But that graduation took three years. And then we take the derivatives. This is the last derivative because then we finally end. Oh, I know what it is. I'm only checking that the last value is zero. But what if you have like some value in the middle or some non-zero values in the middle, but then the last value, this is it. Yeah, so I, I have to check that everything after the initial values is non-zero. After that, you have an exam. Oh, an income tax inspector. So I think I know what my bug is. So here, where's is, where is my while loop? I'm differentiating while only the last value is non-zero, and this is incorrect. Uh... Is this C++ programming language? Uh, no. This is Sintran. This is a programming language that I made. It looks a little bit like Rust, and Rust in turn looks a little bit like C++. So like the, the curly braces, that's that's similar to the C language, but it's it's not exactly the same. Yeah, if, if you go to my GitHub repository, you can find this is the Sintran project. Uh, this is an interpreter that I wrote. It's very buggy. I don't re recommend that anybody use this. Uh, for the last three days of these advent of code problems, I've crashed my Twitch stream every day because I have like a memory leak that eats up all of my RAM in the interpreter. And then, then OBS can't stream to Twitch. So this is not right. You're the scientist. Yeah. What I want to check is while any trailing value of this array is not a zero. And I need to make a function to do this. So it's going to take a vector and it's just going to take the whole vector, but we're not going to check the whole vector because remember we have like the initial values packed into here. So I want to ignore these. 
But then starting here, I want to check if everything is zero. And then if I find a non-zero, I want to keep iterating and taking more derivatives. Uh, so I want to skip the first i values. Now I have to implement this function. So V is a vector of integers. I is just a scalar integer. Have I worked at Google? Uh, no, I, I I do work at a at an American tech company though. I want to rename this vec. So vec is a vector. And then we want to check everything after the number of elements to skip. Which programming language should you learn? Uh, it, it depends what you want to do. Uh, I don't know. Do you need to know any programming language to be a tax inspector? I, I wouldn't think so. So I, I guess you're asking just, just for fun. Uh, C++ is good. And you already know that. C++ and Java are kind of similar. And I, I think it depends. Java, we can do the development, app development. Yeah, so it, it depends what you want to do, but I would say maybe learn something different from C++ and Java because those two are similar. Uh, so maybe learn something like mm, Python, May, maybe JavaScript or TypeScript, but those, those are also a little bit similar to C++. You could do something totally crazy like Haskell. I've never used Haskell, so I don't know, but that's that's a functional programming language. Oh, so, so you want to do app development. Will AI take the job of web developers? I don't think so. I think, uh, if anything, web developers will just start using AI. But I don't think, it's not going to take everybody's job. Maybe it will eliminate a few jobs. But it's like 70 years ago, when they made the Fortran programming language, people thought like, Oh, anybody can code now. Like you don't have to know assembly. This opens things up so that like business people can write code, but that's not really the way things work. You still have developers that are just using the new tools. It never really totally eliminates the jobs that exists that exist. num skip so if we skip one yeah we're gonna start there
purchase the book to learn the code. Uh, I don't really have any book recommendations. I, I, I tend to learn by Googling things. Uh, pick a project, pick up like a fun project that you would like to do just for fun and not because you have to, and then try to do it. And whenever you run into a problem, just Google, go to Stack Overflow, go to whatever online resource you like, or, or, or look at some online tutorials. I, I've never really used a book to learn programming. So if we find an element of the vector that's not equal to the value, we're going to break out of this loop and return. Any not equals. So I think that's what I want to check. Is this still right for the test input? Non bool condition. What does this return? It doesn't return a bool. Okay, so we still have 114. That's the correct answer for the test input. I am from the USA. And I think that's different from what I got last time. Last time I got something close. The first few digits are the same, but the last few are different. So let's see if that's correct. All right, that's part one. I'm going to get a refill for my coffee, and then I'll be right back. Uh... All right, we're back. <clears throat> so what's going on with part two?
trying to think of an easy way to do this. Can we just reverse the string? I mean, not, not like turn one zero into zero one. So not reversing the string, but reversing the integers. And then, but then if we take a derivative, it would be negative. So come and reverse the string and then negate all of the derivatives. Or do we need to negate the derivatives? Because we just want to extrapolate in the other direction now. And I could add logic to like change all my indices to extrapolate to the beginning instead of the end. But what if I just reverse the input and then use the same code that I already have? Will that work? I'm not sure if it will. Zero, 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 two, two, two. 6. But if all of these are negative, I think I actually want negatives. So if I reverse this, all of these will be... If I reverse this sequence, then all of these will be negative. And then what will happen to these? We'll have negative 9 and negative 15. Now we would have negative 15 so I think every other one has to be negated. There, there's like an even odd negation thing. And then when I extrapolate back up, all zeros, all twos. So then here we, we would have to like subtract. Yeah, so I, I, think, I think this should work. I think I should be able to reverse the input vector and then I might have to fiddle with like some negatives on every other derivative or every other integral. But then I think that should work. I just like closed, I just restored my previous Google Chrome session or something. Okay, there we go. So part one, we're gonna copy and paste that and make part two. So this will just run part one twice. Where is it? Okay, there's part one, and then we just ran it again, so we got the same answer. Uh, but now we want to actually change part two and reverse the input sequence. So this is not v, this will be tmp, and then once we have a temporary vector, uh, we're going to reverse it. Uh, I don't have a function to do that, so I'm just going to do it manually right here. I'm not even going to make a function for it. Uh, let v equals tmp, that's just an easy way to allocate it to the same size, and then I'm going to change all of the values for i in zero through size TMP V I I don't want to have to call size over and over again oh well I'll just do it it's gonna be TMP size TMP minus I and then this should be reversed
and then the answers are going to be wrong. Uh, where does part two start? Uh, we, we, I have an off by one error, so, so I missed I missed the initial zero, and I only got the three there. Uh, minus one. Uh, maybe I just want to comment out part one for now, so I don't have to skip through that logging. So that's, I cannot scroll with tmux. So that's the original input, and then this is the same thing but reversed. 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. And now we're going to have to mess with some negative numbers. Uh, but I, I want to look at this one first because this is the example that they give us. Uh, okay, yeah, so we're starting here. 10, 13, 16, 21, 30. Now, notice the first derivative, it's negated compared to what we see here. So we have negative 3, negative 3, negative 5, negative 9, negative 15. But then the second derivative, we're back to the correct sign because there's this alternating sign that happens when you reverse reverse the independent variable for a derivative. So now the second derivative has the same size, but it's still reversed. So 0, 2, 4, 6, then negative 2, negative 2, this one is negated again, and then this one has the same size, but they're all zeros, so it doesn't actually matter. And then when we integrate that, what do we get? Does it just not matter? We, we got a 5. Was that just luck because we happen to have 4 derivatives? What happens if I have an odd number of derivatives? Uh, oh. 2. <laughs> we got the final answer correct. Is it that easy that you, you just reverse it and then you don't have to worry about the signs at all? That would be miraculous. Let's, let's try it with a real input. There's no way this is right. But let's let's see. That was easy. I thought I was going to have to do like a whole lot of negative sign fiddling because of because of the way that reversing an independent variable works. Cuz cuz if you have a line that's like uh if you have a line that's an upward slope and then you reverse it, it's a line that has a negative slope. But when you take the second derivative, that gets flipped again. So yeah, I thought I was gonna have to account for that, but magically I just didn't have to do anything uh, and it just works. Uh, so let's get this code committed and cleaned up a little bit maybe. I think I wanna remove a lot of this debugging. So this should be parts one and parts two. Part one was this number, and then part two was that number. <clears throat> uh, I was also messing with day eight off stream, uh, and that hasn't been committed yet. I actually fixed all the memory leaks. Uh, I think I think I mentioned that at the beginning of this stream, but like I still don't have the right answer because I think there's another overflow problem. Uh, and I think to actually solve day eight, you have to like look for the cycles. 
So like you, you start at something that ends with an A and you want to eventually end up at something that ends with a Z. But rather than doing like 2 billion steps and repeating it, you just have to like find a cycle and figure out what the frequency of that cycle is. And then for all of the paths that you're, all the threads that you're following in parallel, you have to find like the least common multiple of all, of all those cycles. Uh, that's my idea. I don't know if that's the right way to do it, but I probably don't have time to fix it. Uh, so what do we have? I, I had like one version with all the functions inlined and another version where they're not inlined. Maybe I'll add that. What is this, day nine? And finally, I got both parts today. Uh, I've been having trouble for the past few days with not being able to get both parts, but today was not so bad. Uh, maybe it shouldn't have taken me an hour and a half. I had some embarrassing off by one errors that took me a while to fix, but we got there eventually. Let's see if that pushed, and then I want to clean up some of this debugging. Okay, so there's a bunch of terrible code. This is this is from day eight, actually. But then, come on, where's day eight again? Here's day nine, but this is just the input. It's like 200 lines. And finally, here's the code that we wrote for day nine with the integral function and the diff function. Uh, but when I run this, uh, you get a bunch of junk in the console. Uh, and that actually slows it down. So I, so I want to take that out. N now that I know it's working correctly, I don't really need to print every derivative and every integral. So. That should be cleaner. One second, that's uh, that's not too bad. Are those answers still correct? I think they look right. It's very hard to click in just the right place when the rest of my window is blocked by the chat. Uh, let's double check that these are still correct. So we had 181, the last few digits are 966, that's still correct, and then we have 1140. I think that's good. All we did was comment out the prints. Yeah, I think that's that's almost it for today. If we go back I only got part one of day eight. I only got part one of day seven. I only got part one of day five. Uh, day five was a little difficult. I don't know if, if I'll have time to do that, but I think I can figure out day seven part two. Uh, I might do that off stream. I've streamed for an hour and a half. I think I'm done for today. Uh, yeah, I might not figure out day eight either, but I will probably stream again tomorrow and around the same time and try day 10. Let's see that this last cleanup got pushed. Yep. All right, I think that's it for today. I will catch you next time.